Welcome to Sunstar Games, the place to find new strategy games. And today we're going to continue my All Objectives Complete guide in Unity of Command 2. This time we shall be doing the Normandy Breakout. Welcome to the tactics window of Normandy Breakout. Now the most difficult thing about this map is supply. You have 60% max supply and you have only one supply source that's connecting to railways, which is this thing in Cherbourg. So... We have 100% supply on this railway to here, but, and it kind of controls like this general area, but you do not get anywhere else that you can place your supply hub until you manage to control this entire railway to this position, because then you have still 100% supply to all of these other railways because it's going to connect up. So controlling this railway is your utmost priority, and you need to focus on that above everything else. Around turn three or four, you should control this part of the railway that I kind of marked. If you don't, you're gonna have a really hard time finishing all the bonus objectives. Now, once you do, you need to take units that belong to the first or third US Army, and you're going to move them here towards Saint Nazar, and then here towards Lorient and Brest. I have done it the way that I've taken the U.S. 1st Army towards St. Nazar and the U.S. 3rd Army towards these other two. It doesn't really matter. Just make your choice in the beginning and start moving them there. You want to be moving all the infantry units that belong to these armies. Your tanks will be using differently, okay? So you need to start pushing here fairly quickly because it's going to be but quickly but not before you control the railway because if you do it too soon then your um, units will be unsupplied and even if they get there they won't be able to do anything now all Brest, Florian and Saint Nazir are ports which means they will be fully supplied at all times and there is no way for you to unsupply them so you're going to be need to using some special abilities or take um disadvantage odds for example you can do like two zero attacks that is actually really bad attack for you but um you will lose two steps but if the attack suppresses enough of enemy steps it can still be useful i've done it in the playthrough i'm going to be showing you which means that i've actually ended uh, on turn eight instead of turn nine i had control of all of these but you want to kind of decide like whether it's necessary in your run or not, but sometimes it can be useful, so keep that in mind. Now, how do we get Le Mans, Chartres, Paris Suburbs, and Lazy? So, Le Mans, around turn three or four, once you control the railway, you want to use all the tanks that you have, essentially all the tanks that you have, and you want to start focusing on Le Mans. You might want to take some extra infantry to help because things aren't the best uh, with attacks against city but you should be able to take it around turn five or four or something like that so once you have le mans and you start moving the infantry towards this group you want to focus on taking the tanks that belong to the third and first u.s army and you're going to be taking the tanks and move them in this direction one move them there earlier because the tank is the main thing that you're going to be using to control to be able to take control of this whole railway okay so you need the tank for the railway and then you need the tanks for the mounts and then the tanks that belong to the u.s army can go and help with these bonus objectives your other tanks, the ones that belong to British and Canadian Army, are going to be pushing in this direction towards Chartres and Paris suburbs. You also want to take some infantry to help out so you can control. I am pushing towards Chartres and Paris to the sort of bottom part here through this. With this upper part, what you want to do is you want to, you always need to keep some units on the railway because what cannot happen to you is that an enemy unit will kind of try to like sneak in. That would be a really big problem if the enemy unit did something like, you know, if for example, this thing just suddenly decided, oh, oh hey, I'm going to stop here. Then you're going to have a lot of trouble with your US units on the left. So you can't do that. So you will always need to keep some units standing here. Now with the units that are going to be standing here, you want to attack whatever enemy units the enemy has in this direction you do not need to push towards let you just stand on the on the railways or near the railways and fight off the enemy units when it's beneficial for you now around turn eight or nine or something like that you should have enough strength in over here to be able to take both chartres and paris 
So at that point, you'll have this. Now at that point, or near that turn, you should have been able to kill essentially all the enemy units, so you can just go to Lasai and take it. If you didn't manage to do it yet, you still have two extra turns. So Lasai is not, you don't even need to think about it. You're going to get it freely at some point. But it's not something that you have to push towards or worry about in any direction. The thing you do need to push towards are these three bonus objectives as they're the most difficult to get. Don't be afraid to use things like motor pool abilities to move your units faster. Also, you want to be using emergency supply on units that are out of supply even for just one turn because you don't have that many command points usually with the US Army. So you might need to use emergency supplies on a bunch of units when they're unsupplied at first turn so you can use your command points on the next turn on the other units. Alright, so I think that's it for the explanation and now let's begin. Welcome back from the tactics window. The first thing I'm doing is I'm buying some specialists. You want to focus on specializing your tanks with things like extra armor or essentially anything just to make them a little bit stronger because you would ideally like to have like zero to zero through odds on essentially anyone with your tanks then make sure that you focus on the unit from the first and third u.s army and that you give them priest or any kind of artillery ideally priest because that will really help you out then this unit here is pretty important you want to have engineers here and either priest or the other artillery because you want to attack this unit over here so that you can kind of step into their territory it's not completely necessary to take control of this area you can completely leave it but it's going to make it a bit easier so i would recommend buying some stuff here if you have prestige but the u.s armies are more important than this one so this is just me using up my prestige wherever I wanted to, because why not? Uh, I, a lot of times I just bought whichever specialist was cheap. I mean, like, understanding the rules, the basic rules, obviously. Like, you don't want to put anti-tank on tank. But um, otherwise, just take whatever cheap. I'm also building bridges. This is uh, not really necessary, just to help with movement a little bit, if you'd like. Now, next thing I did, I moved the HQs. That's actually quite important. I moved the US HQ here because that will help you in moving there. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the US Army, first army down here towards Saint Nazar and the third army towards Lorient and Brest. You can switch it around, doesn't matter, but make sure that you kind of remember what army you're using there because common problem that I had in this scenario was that I would mess it up and then I couldn't use any abilities and then you just didn't make it in time because it's pretty rough to do it in time. Now your main focus, see I'm using the set piece attack over there with that unit so that I could step in if I needed to but the main focus should be to control this railway. This is the most important thing so you always want to push in that direction first, try to find the best odds that you can get click on different kind of units to figure out okay i'm going to be using this unit not that unit we're doing this in the history mode because it just it takes a really long time it's like an hour and a half even without or like an hour i think even without me talking just because i'm clicking on the different units to figure out what to use so i didn't think that'd be that exciting to watch so that's why we're doing it like this but yeah essentially i'm always clicking on my unit figuring out who has like zero one zero two odds and then using that up also remember if you overrun an enemy unit you are and you move you lost your, all your movement points previously you can't move anymore so you want to utilize that when you hit other enemies for example this tank right now it can only attack it cannot move so if i get um this well this unit actually could only retreat here so that'd be fine but if there was a space here and this unit would retreat it would, could get away from this thing and then you couldn't use the ability so that's why often you want to use if you have overrun you want to use that ability first because otherwise the retreat might make the enemy go away. It happened to me quite a few times. Maybe not necessarily in this playthrough that I'm showing you, but it does happen. So essentially your aim right now is, like I said, focus on the railway. And then with your other units, you want to hit the enemies where you can. Your US Army units, you want to hit the enemy if you can with them. And then you want to focus the infantry in the direction of, of these sort of bonus objectives that you have in that direction. Your tanks you want to use to control this sort of lower part of the railway because these units are here to control this part and the tanks need to control this kind of bottom part. Now this is going to differ quite a bit depending on how your enemy moves. Now here 
this is also important i have prepped this unit i'm not really moving further away because if you look at my supply there is no way for me to supply that um, unless i get this railer so i the furthest i can place a supply up is over here i cannot place it anywhere closer so if you run away too fast with your units they will be unsupplied and you will be in trouble so that's why this railer is just so important at all times At this point, the zero two attacks weren't really useful anymore, so I've, well, or more specifically, I didn't have any. So I started using things like um, suppressive fire, set piece attack, etc., to use them up on the on the enemies. This particular map it isn't so difficult, like tactics wise. Like the tactics are pretty straightforward. Like you know what you have to do but it's very prone to mistakes like you don't uh, check whether you can move your unit in that space after etc you don't check you don't notice one one hex on the rail and the enemy steps in and takes it and then you're unsupplied so it's really kind of you have to really watch out on the rail and make sure that you're really really covering it up in every possible direction Right, the enemy is falling back a little bit, which is not half bad, but we have a lot of enemy units on this railroad, so we need to focus on that first. Now, tanks tend to have 0, 1, 0, 2 odds on almost everything, so I like to take my infantry first and try to see if my infantry can have 0, 1, 0, 2 odds, and if so, use my infantry first, and then on the more difficult targets where the infantry doesn't have good odds, then I'm using the tanks because the tanks have the benefit. Now this uh, particular supply, it would be a good idea to take it, but keep in mind what your main focus is. So don't try to run there and then the price is going to be that you can't take some sort of a railway hex. The railway is always your first priority. And I know I'm repeating it a lot, but when I play it myself, I'd often be like, oh, I'm just going to take this. It's going to be fine, right? Well, no, because you forgot to do the other thing and then your poor yours people died off. Uh, this particular part is not overly important. I'm doing it to increase the experience of my people because I have the 0102 attacks, but we're not going to be using it in order to attack Paris, per Paris or anything like that. It's just there to sort of push through. And also it's there to kind of occupy the enemy because if the enemy is sending units up here to help himself, then he's not having them on the railway, which is so it's kind of like to trick the enemy. He gets into thinking that I really care about that place, but I do not. I'm trying to sort of position my units next to Cayenne on the railer to make sure the enemy can step into it because it happened to me like there was a in, in the playthrough I forgot hex here and the enemy just stepped in it I was like seriously because <laughs> it's really a problem if you mess it up quite a big one so that's why I have this kind of double line you don't need a double line like it's a bit of an overkill but you do need to protect it I took my tank which is fine Now again, all these units here, they seem like you want to fight them. They're not necessary to fight unless you have nothing better to do with your other units. Now it's turn 3. Between turn 3 and 4, you should control the entire railway. Uh, if you don't, you are going to be in trouble. So like by the end of turn 4, you should absolutely control the entire railway. Otherwise, it's it's over. I mean, it's not over, you just won't get the bonus objectives in time, most likely. Unless you have some really, really good setup that, yeah, most likely you won't make. So just make sure that you do that. Yeah, I'm trying to kill off this unit. It's, it's in a city, so we don't have the best odds, but we just gotta take it. Now this particular scenario is quite interesting in the sense that if you want to take the bonus objectives, you might do some sort of unfavorable odds. Not right now, but we're going to see it later. If you don't worry about bonus objectives, I feel like you could do this without getting hurt. Well, I don't want to say at all, but like almost not hurt at all, because you have a lot of these times where you have the zero to attacks that you can use pretty easily. But for the bonus objectives, we're going to have to take some, some, some risks. I'll talk to you more about it when it's um, happening. 
Uh, this is all US Army, so I'm trying to move them closer down here and sort of get ready for when we finally control the railway and we can start moving in. The people in San Malo, you don't need to kill them. They are not really hurting you and they will get unsupplied by themselves, but I'm kind of just there to sort of block them from getting to trying to move too much away. And we were given a reinforcement, which was this tank. And the enemy is kind of falling back, which is pretty good. Now this is on a railway, but not the railway I need in order to connect to the left. So while I will probably fight the tank, it's not completely necessary right this second. For Le Mans, you could unsupply it if you surround it. Uh, I didn't do it in this particular um, playthrough because I didn't really need to. But sometimes you can uh, you can just try to um, surround it and then get it on turn 6 or like sometime later. As you can see, it, it went a bit better for me, so I didn't need to do that. It's not generally necessary, necessary. Like you can usually just kill off the people in Le Mans with your abilities, but it's a possibility. All right. Now at this point, this is this is the most important part. At this point, I controlled the entire railway. So if you look at my supply, things change. I can now place my su supply hubs in all of these really cool places. I am controlling all of this, and I can finally start pushing down here towards Saint Nazir, and then here towards Brest and Lorient because I know that my units will be supplied. So this is important. If you're wondering why I'm moving through here, I was trying to take control of both sides of the bridge so the enemy won't destroy it. So this one we're just, I'm checking, you know, every time like, what army does my unit belong to? Is it the third or is it the first? And then moving it along the railways. Sometimes I move slightly away from the railways because I'm trying to kind of see where the enemies are. Because, in again, in another one of my playthroughs, what happened was there's some enemies here, and he just sort of sneaked in backwards here. And then the units I had forward became unsupplied, and that created problems. So you want to kind of watch out for that. But generally, you want to stay on the railways where you can. Now, at this point, I'm starting to look at my tanks and checking what... Um, what HQ they belong to, and if it's uh, like a Canadian or British, then I'm keeping it here on the right towards Paris. I keep wanting to say Paris because I'm learning French. And uh, on the, the US ones, I'm bringing them to the left so that they can help out if necessary with the bonus objectives. Also, make sure that you move your uh, US first and third HQ closer towards where you need them. So that they have the, the cities that we need sort of in range so we can use the abilities there. Now the enemy is really focusing up there, trying to, you know, like getting ready for to fight with me. Which is really, it's, it's honestly good for us because we don't need to fight there. Moving here towards Saint Nazir. And getting ready for future fights. Resupplying my units so that we remain in supply at all times and trying to push towards brass. You want to move your supply hubs in a, like a good position, but uh, you don't have to worry. So now that you have the railway, you don't really have to worry about it so much because you should keep your people on the railway or in the vicinity of the railway. By the way, this is a good point. Uh, a clear hex is next to railway it will get supplied to the limit of the supply that you have up here in the playthrough mode. But they will get supplied, so you don't always need to be exactly on the railway but nearby. In this scenario, you should be on it because there you have 100% everywhere else, so you just have 50, but yeah. Here again, this is I'm just using this because there's nothing else for me to do with these units. I need to keep them there to control the railway so I cannot sort of like run away with them. Mm -hmm. So I might as well try to hit the enemies because why not? You are going to be using the tanks to take control of Paris and uh, uh, Chartres, so you don't have to kind of you don't need the infantry to do that, you have the tanks for it.
I'm using some motor pool abilities to sort of move my infantry a bit faster towards rest because rest is difficult in the sense that oftentimes you might get to it on turn 8 or even turn 9 so you have to immediately on the turn that you get there get it which can be hard so it can be anything that can help you get there faster is really really good. I took over the city and then it was like I want the city back so I was trying to focus there but we don't care. Now the fact that they put their HQ on the purse hub is actually pretty bad for us. So um, we're gonna hope that they take it away again. Even if they don't, we, we'll take Paris uh, suburbs fast enough that we don't have to worry about it too much. But um, it, is, it is a good good move of the enemy. Chartra, I didn't need to fight there at all. Sometimes you do need to fight there. It's not an overly difficult fight. Just use things like feint attack when you can and try to get some infantry So because it has better odds against cities. But um, you have enough turns to get it. It's turn 6, so it's not a problem. All right, now this is what I uh, talked um, wanted to talk about. So here, when it comes to Saint Nazar, Lorient, and Bress, I'm actually taking shots that are maybe like two one. Sometimes I'm even taking two zero shots, which are really generally bad. It is because if you look at the the um, fight odds. You even if it's too zero, you might suppress some of the enemy units, which could be useful for you because then you don't need to use your special abilities in order to take control. So in this particular scenario, because you have to kind of hurry in getting the bonus objectives and you don't have extra time, you might want to consider just taking some hits simply to be able to control that unit. Also, try to ensure that you leave a space like this hex. Why did I not put my tank on that hex? Well, because I'm trying to get the enemy to retreat. I'm not trying it to, to, to kill it. So I gave the space for the enemy so that I could attack with this unit, get it to retreat, and then I can take Saint Nazir, which is all I care about. Because remember, in Saint Nazir, it's a port, so they're always fully supplied, so it's really hard to get. So um, if I had my tank there, the enemy would be cornered. So yes, they would lose all of their steps if they were to retreat. But you would have to take extra turns to kill it and, and attack from other units and etc. So sometimes it can be just a good idea to just get out. And it's easier for you that way. Now we have Saint Nazir, which means we can start moving these units away towards Lorient to help us out with um, fighting them off. Now here I place these units there to protect the railway from this unit. It doesn't step on there and take it away. Yeah, again, I'm, I've actually taken some, I've lost that tank. I've taken some really risky move. But again, it, because you want to take that space. You can, we have turn six, so we could have probably waited here. But honestly, I was kind of impatient. I was like, I'm just going to take it. And we're going to take it now. So we're just going to sacrifice that, that tank and that's it. And we're focusing on fighting here. Since we get the experience shift in, in combat, it's pretty important. It's actually really beneficial if your units are like elite or veterans and not regular. And since we occasionally take some losses, we need to resupply and that kind of lowers the experience. So doing things like this here, where you can essentially kill off the enemy without hurting yourself can be very beneficial. Ideally, you should be looking at what level your unit is. Like for example, if you have two different units that can do like zero to attacks, you should be looking at what level they are. For example, this one is regular, this one is veteran. So you might want to use the regular one to do the attack so you can level it up first. And then if you're veteran and elite, you want to use veteran so that it becomes elite. But I guess it depends on how long you want to take in each sort of combat, I guess. Now the enemy tried to move with the same Nazir toward the railway, but because I had my units there, I was kind of protecting it. Now the enemy actually moved the HQ away from Paris Suburbia, which is really good for us because now you might not have the movement points to get in. But like I said, we're going to take Paris fast enough that it doesn't actually make much of a difference. Like even if there was the HQ, we could just easily, easily step on that next turn. So it's not really a big deal. We have it now. So if there was the HQ and I couldn't step in, I could do it next turn.
Okay, uh, we're gonna focus on breast now. I'm using some faint attacks. And uh, this was actually a pretty, pretty uh, risky move. Like a um, not beneficial move like I talked about, but I just decided to kind of sacrifice them to, to take it over. Because I really want to be done with this scenario, to be completely honest. <laughs> so we've done that. Um, I think it was probably a good decision. We will, we will finish this on turn 8, so we have one turn to spare. So theoretically, you could say we could have waited down in the turn later, but with the RNG, I think it's just better. In this scenario, I'd say just take the risk. It's fine. Because of the main, the way the main combat works and with the, your prestige and specialist, you shouldn't take that much damage on the regular combat. You can afford to take some unnecessary damage with the bonus objectives. At least that would be my advice. And I move back and forth there a little bit. Now let me show you here the positioning on of my uh, HQs. So you can see that my uh, third and first are here. And this is actually a really good position because it take uh, it hasn't controlled this, but also this. So I could use abilities from both armies, uh, from both HQs, because I have like this belongs to the... Actually it doesn't say here, that's a bit unfortunate. I think these both belong to the first army. But these, uh, I think like one of these here is maybe first army, one of these is third army, so that's why it's kind of important. If you are here, you can control both. So yeah, we just used whatever abilities we have and things to take control of brass. Now it's turn 8. Now I'm just doing some extra additional killing to increase the experience and just because I can mostly. But at this point, let me just quickly show you. All objectives are now completed. Right, and now it's over. We have one whole turn to spare. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, write down in the comments and I'll see you in the next areas. Bye bye.